When I first entered grad school at the University of Denver, I was told husband, career, kids, pick two. I'm Dr. Michelle Coons. I am the Curator of Archaeology at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. I first became interested in, I guess, archaeology, but I didn't even really know of it as that when I was a little kid. I grew up on the beach in New Jersey. I remember always burying my toys and trying to like relocate them. The discipline of archaeology really is about 100 30 years old, more or less. The beginning of the discipline, and really for many years, was very dominated by males, and especially white males. The narratives that have been built that describe and try to understand the ancient world have been seen for the most part, or for a long time, through a very masculine perspective. I think there is still sort of a tendency to focus on things like hunting and warfare and politics and at the high level that oftentimes there is a perception involved men. And so it's 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 interesting to kind of take a step back from that and realize that if a diversity of voices were involved in the creation of the discipline from the get-go, what those narratives might look like and how our understanding of the past would be just more nuanced and more diverse than what we are working with today. We don't see a lot of projects, what well, we did historically, at least when I was younger and before that, where the, it was led by a female who had their kids in the field. I've been working in South America for many, many years now, and my recent projects are in Peru on the Moche culture. They're both on the north coast of Peru, which is where the Moche lived. And the one project we are looking at these incredible murals that the Moche, they painted over 1500 years ago. So the project is led by all women and we are all moms. And then we're also really heavily relying on the local perspective and what the local community can bring to how we interpret and what we're seeing in, in this area. They are known for their huge temple complexes made out of adobe that we call wakas. They had, many of these had these incredible murals painted onto the facades. They're known for their beautiful ceramics, as well as their metalwork, their woodwork, textiles, just really amazing craftspeople with a quite complex and interesting political situation. It's very important to me to be able to bring my kid and have him integrated into this project as an example in many ways to say we can do this it's hard i'm in there all day wind beaten a, a hot sun and then get home and have to relieve the nanny and you know mom all night it is exhausting but i think that we need to figure out ways to make this work and what that means might be working a little differently rewriting that history to be inclusive because so many incredible people in, undoubtedly have been left out of helping to tell these stories because of these limitations and we need to change that. One of the biggest barriers I think that needed to be broken down that still needs to be broke down in many ways is funding for childcare in the field. It wasn't until very, very recently that grants would allow that to be a line item to say, I need X amount of money for childcare for the field. That was unheard of. It's still not standard. You don't see it that often. And this needs to be normal. This needs to just be like, of course, yep, check. And so this isn't just for moms, it's for single dads or anybody that has dependents that they need to take care of in any way that they need to be able to bring them with. It's about equity across the board. It's not just about moms. The individuals are the ones who are telling the story about these ancient cultures. And without having a diversity of voices in there to tell those stories, we're only really getting 
certain perspectives. And it's just, it's interesting to think about how the story could be different if you, from the beginning, had more voices. Stay elevated by subscribing to the city's YouTube page for these stories and more. And stay tuned to our social media channels for more content. Don't miss our new episodes of Elevating Denver, premiering each month. Thanks for watching, Denver.